Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the Golden Boots podcast powered by Top Bin 90. This is your host Jorge Gonzalez. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. We love soccer. For episode 20, we have Ryan Fessler. Ryan is originally from the Florida area. He uh, has grown up here in Charlotte, played at Kansas 2 a bit, and is now at Wake. How are you, my man? I'm good. I'm good. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank oh. you. Thank you, man. You're an you're, uh, early riser, correct? Yeah, no. <laughs> it was a little early, but I'm I'm kind of used to it now, so it's all right. Nice, cool, man. Did you make any uh, New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I did make some okay, New Year's nice. resolutions. You haven't broken them yet, have you? No, I haven't. Okay, it's, it's too early to break them yet. That would be bad if 24 hours in, I already. Yeah, broke but it, but I think like everybody who like their New Year's resolution is to, like lose weight or eat healthy. Like, yeah. I feel like half of them are gone after <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> go, to, go to the gym for like a week and then kind of just start to, you know. <laughs> yeah. But like uh, I saw somewhere that said like, yeah, like I want to uh, start losing weight, but then the first is on a Friday and then it's the weekend, so I'll just start Monday. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro, what's the point? What's yeah. the point of the New Year's resolution? Right. Then, you know? But. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, cool, man. So our podcast, we like to bring in different uh players and people in the soccer community here so uh why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself yeah so um i'm from florida okay. um i grew up there for like seven years uh i played it was called saber soccer okay so like my earliest memories of soccer were like i was probably like two three years old okay and my, my brother would, would would be playing and like i would just kind of go to their games and like watch like from the sideline and just kind of like play with the ball and stuff and just you know, just like, just have fun. You okay. Know? Like I was nice. just like a kid and, you know, I got into it like early. Um, I did that soccer and, and Taekwondo. My, okay. Yeah. So my dad, like, he was like really big into Taekwondo. Okay. And so he, he wanted me to be his, like, his like prodigy, I guess. His, okay. Like, his, his fighting prodigy. So, <laughs> but like, I just loved soccer, man. Like, I got you. So I just like, I just like kept playing that and I didn't, I didn't play anything else like I literally just played soccer which okay. is kind of like weird a little bit and I wish I didn't do that at the time because okay. now whenever I play like basketball with my friends or something like I'm, I'm like nowhere near as good <laughs> so, so it's like you know but nah it's soccer is like that's just nice. all, I, all I grew up playing. Dang so you you, you kind of play like Zlatan and he's a martial arts <laughs> guy and uh, he also <laughs> plays soccer. I, I wish I was <laughs> like that bro that'd be <laughs> that would be pretty cool but no. I didn't do it for that long to be, to be, to be good like that, but, uh, nah. Nice, cool. Yeah. So you started in Florida, then you came to Charlotte? Yeah, so I uh, came to Charlotte when I was, like, seven, like I said, and then, um, yeah, I played for uh, Charlotte United. So okay. it was, like, when I came, like, the tryouts or whatever were, they, like, had already passed, and so we were, like, trying to find a way, like, that I could, like, try out and make a team, and uh -huh. unfortunately, like, they were – you know really nice about it and they were like all right like you know you can come out to like a training and like if you make the team then you'll you know you'll be on the team and stuff so so like i, I made the team which was nice. nice and then like just played charlotte united and like met some of like my best friends through that's there. awesome like, man yeah like it was a great club and like that was really like where i got my like fundamentals you know okay like my they were all about just like touches on the ball um just like confidence on the ball like doing moves and stuff and so, like, I really like developed as a player there, like awesome. Charlotte United, and now they, you know. did they pick they did they pick a specific position for you, or was it just like, hey, let's try you out everywhere? And then, no, I, bro, like, I remember I played goalie one time, <laughs> <laughs> so no, <laughs> definitely not a specific position. But I think for the most part, I kind of played like strike. It was like one of those things where it was like, I mean, we were only like nine, yeah. ten, so it was like you may be playing goal to start yeah. and then play striker and like, right. Like, I don't even think there was right back and left. <laughs> I just like center back. Maybe I got but that's like, a, the yeah. scariest thing for me, man, is being a goalie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm like, dude, like well, if, I, if you're not naturally natural at it or like, don't like it, like I'm like, yeah. bro, like I can mess up at any second. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually like, I had fun with it. Actually. Oh really? Yeah. I was like, I was kind of good at it actually. So, okay. Yeah. It was kind of fun. Like I liked going and goal and trying to like save stuff and okay. just like kind of jump around and whatnot. It was pretty fun, but like, yeah. So I was, you know, I was just having fun like playing and, and whatnot. But at the same time I was like, like from like, when I was, like, 9, 10, like, my parents, like, they don't know anything, or, I mean, they do now know stuff about soccer, uh -huh. but, like, at the time, like, they didn't know anything about it, really, yeah. so, like, it wasn't, like, my dad was, like, telling me to, like, go train or whatnot, like, I would just, like, go, like, after training or before training for, like, hours, just, like, dribbling, like, doing, sk okay. like, skills and stuff, like, on my own, just, like, trying to, like, master, like, 
just like bringing the ball out of the air like for hours like I don't like I would just have fun like just doing it and like working on my like technique and, and yeah. whatnot so that's yeah. really important man because like yeah. I think people a lot of times they just do I don't want to say the bare minimum but just what's asked of them I mean, yeah. you went ahead and went the extra mile. Like, no one told you. Your parents didn't know. Yeah. Your coaches weren't like, hey, spend an extra two hours working on this. That's just something that because you were consumed with it and you liked it, like, you're uh -huh. like, okay, like, let me keep improving, right? Yeah. Like, I was, I mean, I was obsessed, like, with soccer. Like, I still am now. But, like, I would, like, watch every single game I could possibly watch, like, Champions League, Premier League, anything. Like, I just, I would just watch all day. And then, like, my favorite team to watch was, like, Barcelona at the time. Hey, nice. You know, like, Iniesta, Xavi, Messi. Like, they were just so much fun to watch. So, I would just, I would just watch them, and I would just try and do the same things. Like, nice. <laughs> just, like, in my backyard or, like, in the garage. Like, anything. Like, just training and just, like, I mean, I didn't even really know what I was, you know, doing, mm -hmm. like, for the most part. But I would just, just touches on the ball and, like, that's, like, super important. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the most important takeaway for me is that you took action. Yeah. Right? Like, so many people make excuses of, like, not to do something. Just, oh, I can't really do this. I can't. Like, no. You're like, okay, like, I want to get better. I'm obviously, com this is something that I love to do. Like, let me work on it. Right? For sure. Yeah. So, that was, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I did when, <laughs> when I was there. And then, so, let's see. So, I was at Charlotte United for several years. And then uh, about, like, 13 13, 14, I, uh, I made the switch to Charlotte Soccer Academy. Uh -huh. And so that was like, I think I went there the year before there was like academy was a, was a thing. So, okay. or not before it was a thing, but before it was like my age group, like gotcha. uh, under 14. So I must have gone when I was 13. So I played on uh, Predator, which is like the, like the top team or whatever. And then... Um, even the name sounds like it's a top team. Right? <laughs> Predator. Predator. <laughs> Predator. <laughs> you guys are playing the Predators today. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, yeah, so it was, like, me and, like, um, yeah, it was just, like, my friends, again, like, from Charlotte United. And so several of them went over to CSA as well. So, you know, we were just, like, play on there. And then um, I, like, played up sometimes with the academy as well. Um, and, like, I was, you know, I was pretty underdeveloped at that time. Like, I was, like, small and, you know, I wasn't really, like, like, I was, like, you know, I was small, I was, like, weak, but, like, just playing against, like, those older players and stuff, like, it was, you know, it was really good for my development as well, and then, yeah, so I played up with them and whatnot, and then played academy for, like, two two years at, at Charlotte Soccer Academy, and then, you know, just kind of, kind of got, like, comfortable in a way, Okay. and, you know, I, there was some really good players on my team, um, you know, and I just felt like, like, I needed to, like, make a jump. Like, I remember telling my, my parents, I was like, like, I was like, you know, I need, a, I need to go somewhere where I'm, like, challenged every single mm. day because I'm, like, I'm too comfortable right now. Dang, that's good, man. Yeah, and, like, comf like if you're comfortable, like, you're not going to be able to grow, yep. you know? So you got to get out of your comfort zone to grow. So I was like, I need to, I need to go somewhere. Where How I did you realize that you were in your comfort zone though? Like what, what kind of things stu stood out to you? Was it just like very repetitive? It was not like it was, you know, like it was, it's a great club. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it was like, you know, some of the mentality, like from some of the other players, like, you know, weren't really so serious about it all the time. Whereas like, I wanted to make this like my life, you know, like mm, I had, that's so important, dude. Yeah. Like I had, great ambition you know I want to be a pro I want to go somewhere where you know I'll be in a professional environment so I remember like that whole season um going into you know the summer um I was like asking kind of like my parents and stuff and we were just kind of looking at like different options and stuff of what what might work what might not and you know eventually um you know went on some like trials and, and whatnot in Europe and stuff and uh looked around for some MLS clubs and you know uh, chose sporting in the end so. nice yeah tell us about that like how what made you choose sporting like what was there a connection did you talk to a coach did they see something in you yeah so um so Jalen uh Jalen Lindsay shout uh -huh. out Jalen uh shout out to him yeah man. shout out Jalen um yeah he was there at the time and um he was on uh he was on CSA before so I knew him from there so I was like we were kind of talking and trying to figure out like where I should go and whatnot and you know they didn't have they couldn't have better things to say about sporting and stuff. So, you know, I, you know, I, I went to okay. sporting. So nice. yeah. 
That's so w- good. what was that transition like? Like when you first like were part of the, their academy and the things that they were doing that you noticed that were very different that started challenging you? Yeah, I think like just the professionalism of it. You know, mm-hmm. I was I went from a place where, um, you know, you would have training at like eight o'clock. You would come home. You would have to like do your own laundry. You would have to. You know, like it, it just wasn't wasn't really the same. You train for an hour, hour and a half, and then you're kind of like done for the day. Um, whereas there, it's like you have to get there. If we have training at let's say two o'clock, we have to get there at like twelve thirty and do like your prep work, activation, all that type of stuff, mm. and then get ready to go to training. And then training could be hour and a half, two hours, and then you have maybe like a lift afterwards, like a lift other types of stuff like just that kind of professionalism and that like also like just like the time piece like being there early like getting that like in your head that Mm. you're here early you're here to train you're here to work like all that all the other distractions like go away the the second you step in the building i love that man that's so good like i mean like that's exactly what you were looking for though like you were like okay i need to get uncomfortable and i mean like i love that because like that mentality that they're doing is, hey, like, we're trying to develop professionals. Because, I mean, in the professional world, you do stuff like that, right? Yeah, for sure. No, so, like, I was also, like, trying to, like, get that mentality. Um, Like, I always kind of knew, like, not in, like, a cocky way, but, like, I always knew, like, my skill and stuff, like, my ability, like, I I would be able to make it. Um, But I think what I needed was almost like that mental piece like to be challenged every single day and whatnot and and just to like just be like tougher mentally yeah you know like that was like a big thing for me like I remember I remember um like I said like going into that summer like I had like a trial um I went to trial in in Holland and I was there and I was like you know I felt from a like a skill standpoint like I could you know I could do this but I, at that time, I didn't have, because I was, you know, 14, I didn't have that mindset where mm. I was like, I'm going to go in there and I'm, I'm going to be the man. Like, I don't care who's there. I don't care, like, who's on the team. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get my spot. But, like, at that time, like, I didn't have that, you know? You gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I think that's important, man, to talk about because, I mean, there's people that, like, just have the mindset off the get-go. Like, you know, yeah. like, you're not going to tell them anything, right? Mm-hmm. But there's also a lot of people that, like, it takes experiences for them to learn that, like, s- same uh, boat, like, I'm with you. Like, there were certain things that happened in my life that made me develop a stronger mindset. But, like, looking back, I was like, man, if I had that mindset then. Yeah. But, like, these experiences teach you now because in the future when something similar happens you will go in there like nah man like i don't care who this is you know what i'm saying for sure yeah like yeah like even with like it's the same thing as like like uh like soccer your ability with the ball or something it's it's the same thing like it takes experience it takes like things to happen for you to really like grow from a mental standpoint yeah um so it's it's the same thing like it goes hand in hand yeah and i think even now it's a little bit more important though because like everything like especially like big teams like players get headlines for like bad things all the time you know if you mess up in the game like everybody's pointing at you so imagine like the mental toughness that you have to have to come back out of that yeah no like like if you you know i can't i mean those players they play one bad game and on social media they're like this guy sucks like why is he here like like you gotta block out that noise Mm. you know and like i don't know that's i've always kind of thought like that was like almost like funny like if i you know if someone said like oh like you suck like blah blah blah. like if you're gonna have the time to to hit me hit me up saying like i suck and all this stuff and you're just like watching then like you know there's no there's no point like i'm i'm winning at the end of the day it's 100 percent, bro yeah like imagine all these like hate groups for like top (laughs) players yeah like i'm bro like yeah like they're they're not even gonna notice you or like (laughs) even if they do like it'll be in their brain for a second and then they'll go back to their, their lifestyle yeah that's what i'm saying like they just flip it off, flip the switch and just don't even, don't even listen to it. Cause the second you start listening to it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, like it's in your head. And once it's in there, like it's hard to get out, I think. Mm. So it's just either it's good, it's bad. Just don't listen to it. hundred percent, man. Yeah. I love that. Tell us more about Kansas, man. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about maybe like you playing, like what was that like? What's that experience like? Yeah. Um, so so I was there for probably about four or five years almost. That's crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> time so, flies, right? <laughs> time flies for sure. Um, yeah. So I, my first year was like with the 16s and stuff. Like it was a great team. Like some of those guys that were on the team, like where they are now, like all of them are 
you know, playing like D1 high level where they're nice. like pro or, you know, we just had like a great team. So like it was, you know, it was really good to go into a team like that and like fight every day for your place. You know, like I wasn't like a, a starter like right away or whatnot, you know, where I went from CSA where I was like almost the man. And then I went into a new place where like there's all these guys that are, you know, national team, yeah. all this stuff. And I was like, man, like I got to I got to fight for this. But th that's what I wanted to. That's yeah. where I wanted to be, you know, like. If you're around the best, like you're gonna become the best as well. A hundred percent. I love that. That yeah. is such a good quote, man. Like, yeah. if you're around the best, you will definitely become the best. Because I mean, like, when you're a big fish in a small pond, you're still in a small pond, right? Yeah. Like, you, you can't grow. There's no 100%. food. Not enough food to yep. grow. You know. So, so that's that's where I wanted to be. That's where I was getting challenged. So, yeah, that year went went great. We got to like the quarterfinals of a. Uh, of like the playoffs we played like rsl real salt lake and nice I remember they beat us it was like it was tough like they beat us 3-0 and i remember their their like locker room was like next so we played in the stadium okay and i remember their locker room was like next to ours and after the game they were like going crazy like banging on like the walls and like shouting and like because so, that's gotta be the worst feeling man. it was like it was like an <laughs> awful feeling and everyone was just like i remember our coach was like just like remember this feeling in your gut because like it's gonna stick with you for a while, and like it's Dang, true, like it was, it was like pretty pretty heartbreaking. So, I yeah, that's what I remember from that season. And then next season, um, next season was kind of the the season where I like flipped it. There, you know, I went from, um, you know, I would I would start like a lot of the games uh, on my first year, but sometimes I would you know come off the bench or or stuff like that. And I was like, I remember going into that season, I was like, this is the season where like I become that guy. Nice. And like I, I take over like this team, and you know that's that's what I did. I started like every single game that year. Um, just was like a great. It was like a great time. Like I was just playing game in, game out. Like super fit, could like play, f like play f however long, you know, and just like, just like fought with my team, and like we did really well. We had a good year. Um, and yeah, that was. That was, like, from what I remember that year. That's awesome, man. I mean, like, you, you went in with a goal as well, which is important, right? Like, mm -hmm. you, yeah. like especially, like, when you're playing, like, I feel like academies, is it's a whole another ball game. Like, just you speaking about it, like, I know a couple of things, but, like, it's good to get a player's perspective because, I mean, their whole mentality is to produce uh players right like yeah. to produce like professional players like some people will fall short some people will actually make it but like it's it's there it's kind of like when you go like the gym is there yeah like if you get fatter it's not the gym's fault you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. all the equipment was there it's like all there, bro. <laughs> yeah. you can't blame the gym right yeah no for sure um yeah you can't <laughs> <laughs> nice so that's awesome. And then uh, I know I know we talked a little bit about like uh, an injury that you had, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically I was um, I was 17 years old. Um, I was so I remember this like whole. So the whole summer it happened in um, December. Okay. Injury happened in December. And so uh, we had like our season. It was the my last age, my last year on the 17s. Um, so we had like whole summer you know usually you're off but like I got um, picked to stay and, and train with the USL team um, so I trained with them the entire summer and whatnot and just like getting like good reps against like pro players like they nice. I, you know like at that point it wasn't uh, it wasn't really like an academy type team okay. to whereas it is now it was more kind of like professional players around like 25 26 so like it was like awesome talk a little bit more about that then before we talk about the injury because that's that's a very interesting topic yeah no like it was it was a really good experience like it went from training from you know kids your own age to, yeah. to playing against grown men in training and like the mentality shift like I thought you know it was tough you know playing with the academy but then you're playing against against guys who are trying to you know earn a living and support yeah. their family like it's a whole different mentality so you need to come every single day, like just like ready to ready go. to go. Because if you're not, then they'll just say, "All right, this kid's not performing. We're gonna bring in another academy kid to yeah. come train with these guys." And I was like, "No, like that's me. Like I need to be there. Yep, I need to be there training with these guys and and just improving and day out and day out and try and get into that team even and try and you know I was only 17 at the time, but you know, although it didn't happen that year, my mentality was like, man, like I need to get in this team and try and get like minutes and stuff because, yeah. you know, I felt like I could. So, What kind of things do you think 
like when it comes to that level because i mean like first of all i think the difficult thing is like you're still like a teenager you know what i'm saying yeah. and like you're with grown man like what kind of things do you think if you could tell us that would make someone shy away from like okay like i'm not ready for this like let me not like yeah like kind of put your confidence down i think um i think maybe the way they play um you know if if you make a mistake maybe when you're on the academy uh your your it's your friends so they're gonna maybe not be as harsh on you you know yeah if you make a mistake with them when you know let's say you're, you're let's say you're like on a team with like guys that aren't in the starting 11 and you're playing like five aside or something and you know these guys are trying to get into the team you yeah know, they you know for a lot of usl players they only sign one year contracts and then they have to find like another club that's just kind of the way it works so if you're not performing and you know your team's like losing or something then these guys are like they're gonna be screaming at you like mm. you're gonna feel like you're gonna feel that pressure like if you're not performing you're gonna feel that these guys are like you know they're really like <laughs> they're not happy with you you know but you need to in your mind you need to be like all right like this is this is okay like I can you know just find my form just like connect the passes do my thing and and like the rest will come but like if you don't if you're not strong enough mentally like those moments like they can tear you down man break you yeah yeah so that's that's what i felt about that is like you need to be super super tough and in those uh in those like things that's really good man because i i think a lot of that teaches you before you make it to a big level or even pro like um there's a lot of internal things that have to happen for them to be processed externally yeah you get what i'm saying for sure yeah like i always thought that like you know, your ability on the ball, athleticism, those things are, like, the most important, but, like, it's almost gotten to the point where I think, like, mentally, like, mentally, if you're not, like, there, like, you're not going to make it. Like, I honestly think to the point where if, like, your mentality is the most important thing in soccer, whether that's being tough, mentally tough, whether that's being, you know, uh, coachable like yeah. that's that comes with your mentality just like being a team player like those all go hand in hand so. that is so good bro like yeah. that like yeah like you're right like the ability piece is important but the mental the desire to like i mean like your desire to get away from where you were to just challenge yourself i mean like stuff like this is important oh yeah for you know sure. what i'm saying yeah and it's like you know i uh you know i've always been like coachable and stuff but like that mental toughness like i wasn't always like that you know um i was comfortable and then once i got out of that zone i was like man like you know i need to be tougher mentally and it's something that you like you work on yeah and you know i've gotten to the point now where you know having suffered like a a huge injury and coming back from it like i feel like almost on top of the world with my mentality I yeah. love that, man. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about that mindset, though, because like I'm, I mean, I I tore my ACL this year and yeah. like uh, in March, and like I'm used to just being on the go, you know, like oh, yeah. uh, that's just who I am. Like, okay, like the way I perform is like, okay, I can do stuff for a long time, and then I need three days to like no one bother me, like let me relax, just because I need to refuel and then go again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like at, when I tore my ACL, like like I can't even walk. I need help doing stuff. And I'm such an independent person that I hated yeah, that so much. That dude, that was like <laughs> the worst part. Honestly, that was the worst part. Like just like having, like, you couldn't like if you wanted a snack or something and you're laying on the couch, <laughs> you can't get up and just like get it. You have to ask someone to get it. And like I hated that. Yeah. I hated asking my. <laughs> my mom to like grab something for me or like whatnot it was it was yeah. like the worst feeling and you come from like an italian household so like that's the family life so like same thing i'm honduran and like uh first like my mom forced me to go to her house i'm like mom i'm a grown man she's like now nah, you come in here and like like i appreciate it but like like you're right like when you're an independent person like you just want to do stuff for yourself right yeah and i mean this is coming from a perspective of like just like i'm just a regular person like i'm not like a professional in a sport so yeah. for you that's a whole different like everything changes you know what i'm saying everything yeah like yeah so should i should i get into that now like the injury yeah, yeah. so i so basically like i said i was training that whole summer i was super fit like i was flying and um and i go and i get like a an overuse injury to my groin um in about probably in like october maybe and you know, this was kind of like a, a little injury that I had. And I was like, all right, like, you know, I've been playing for a while. Like, you know, it's okay. Something like this happened. Um, let's like rehab and get back to it. And so I did my rehab for it. 
And I don't know, like, do you know about, like, the Winter Showcase or whatever for, like, U.S., like, soccer DA? Slightly, but Slightly. Not, yeah, uh, yeah. go into it more. So it's, like, a, it's like called the Winter Showcase, mm-hmm. um, and it would be, like, a, it's, like, a tournament, sort of, and, and it's always in Florida. It's in December, and it's, like, a bunch of scouts go there, coaches, national team coaches, college coaches. Like, it's a, it's a really big place to, like, show yourself, you know? And so... So I was, my goal when I got hurt was like, I need to come back from this and, and be ready for the winter showcase. Yeah. So I was like doing my thing. I was getting back. Like I didn't have much time before I got back. Like we had to go to the winter showcase. Probably okay. I only trained like two days. And so I was like, it's kind of like tight or whatever. And then I remember we get there um, and like the trainers are telling me like, I have like limited minutes. Um, so the first game I could only play 15 Second game, I could play 30. Last game, I could play 45. So, um, you know, and I was like, at the time, I remember I was like, man, like, I'm fit. Like, I can do this. It's only been, like, six weeks. Yeah. Bro, I was <laughs> I was, I was, wrong. Like, it's running fitness is completely different than, like, game fitness. Mm. So, like, after I played 15, I was like, all right, this is, they might be right here. Yeah. So, so, it was the third game. I played 45. Um, and like, it was just like a weird, it was a weird day. Like I just, I wasn't, I don't think I was supposed to start actually. I think I was supposed to come on at half at like 45. Okay. But I, some, one of my teammates, he like missed breakfast. Um, so my coach was like, all right, like you're going to start now. So okay. I was like, all right, like. Cause he missed breakfast? Missed breakfast. Like, wow. Okay. Like over there, bro. It's, it's like, it's cutthroat. Like if you're not on time, you're not, tr- you're not playing. It's that type of thing. Well, I mean, it's good that it's like that, right? It's good, yeah. Like, it's if you don't develop those, like, yeah. little habits and stuff like that, then, like, it's, you know. So, I mean, like, take serious. Like, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> 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 Coaches <laughs> think so, right? Yeah, hey, if you miss breakfast, bro, it's, <laughs> it's over for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, man. so he missed breakfast. And then, um, so I, I play, and I played, like, it was, like, 30 minutes into the game. And I was, like... I was like feeling really tired. Like my legs were like dead for some reason. And so I remember like telling my coach, I was like, I was like, my legs are dead. And he was like, all right, there's like 10 minutes left. Like, do you want to come out or, or, uh, or do you want to keep playing? And I was like, you know, I'm never going to say like, I'm, I want to come out, yeah. you know? Cause I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a competitor. I don't want to come out. Yep. So I'm like, no, nah, like I'm good. I'll, I'll just wait out 10 minutes. And so he was like, all right, just we'll play out wide now. I was playing the 10. So he okay. moves me, he moves me out wide. Um, and so, bro, literally a second later, the ball, they, like, what, what happened again? They, like, clear the ball. My center back heads it out wide to me, and the ball is, like, coming into me, and I was planted on my, my right leg, and I go to set the ball, and, like, my legs are, like, like dead. You know, you know when your, like, legs are tired? Yeah. It's, like, you know, you can't control kind of what happens. This guy, like, like, clatters me from behind, and all the weight, like, goes over like on my knee oh god and like like awful awful pain like i <laughs> like i can't even like describe the pain um and i was like it felt like my my kneecap like went to the like shifted out of place or something yeah. so i remember my trainer came on and i was like she was like what happened and i'm like screaming i'm like 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 it hurts so bad i was like i think my kneecap like went out of place or something and and she was like she was like, all right, like, you know, let's, let's come out. Like I couldn't put any pressure on it. Like they had to like carry me off the field basically. And so we like get down and I guess like my leg had like, like swelled up so fast that it was like hard to really tell, but she kind of thought that it wasn't like super serious. So I was, I I remember being like, all right, like, you know, this this might, this might not be so bad. And then, um, so I remember we, the game, we like flew home. Uh, it was our last game. So we flew home that night, got in probably around like 2 a.m. or something like that and I remember we had a we had to go see like the doctor and I was like preparing myself but at the same time I was kind of like all right like it might not be so bad and I remember him like testing out my knee and he was like you know there's a 90 percent chance that you tore your ACL and like in that moment when he told me that like so many emotions just like just came over me like I didn't even know what to feel you know like I've never that thought of that never like cross my mind or, or anything I was like so like just like stunned and you know caught in the dark really and so um so we scheduled like an MRI to kind of see you know the extent of it and so that was like maybe a day later got the MRI and then you know at that point I uh I prepared myself already like I kind of in my head I was like 
it probably is my ACL, you know? Yeah. And so, like, mentally, I prepared myself to, like, you know, if that's what happens, like, you know, you're ready to take this on. Um, and sure enough, it was, you know, my ACL. And, you know, I remember the, the one of the trainers with the second team, he called me and he, he told me on the phone. And I was, like, I was, like, emotionless. I was, like, all right, like, I, I expected that. And uh, we got off the phone and I just kind of sat there. And, like, I told myself in that moment, I was, like, like, you're going to get through this on the other side. Like, you, no matter what anyone says, no matter what people think, when, no matter what happens, like, I'm going to get through this, and I'm going to come out not, like, just the same player. I'm going to be better than what I was before. That's so good, like, man. There was no doubts about that, no doubts about that in my head. Like, I knew that I was going to get through that, yep. you know? That is so important, man. Like, the stuff that you talk to yourself, like, listen, people say talking to yourself is weird. Okay, I get it. At the end of the day, like, yeah. there's things that go into your mind, right? Yeah. Like, it's whatever you say. If you say you can't do something, you're not going to be able to do it. But mm -hmm. if you prepare yourself the way that the way that you're describing, I mean, that's exactly the mindset that you need to have. Because sure. it's very easy to just go negative. Oh, yeah, for right? sure. Like, self-talk, like, like you said, like, it's, I think it's, super important yep you know so um yeah like and it's it's kind of weird like i'm like a really a really positive like person uh -huh. so it was almost like i was too positive and <laughs> in that scenario like i was i was telling myself i'm like i'm ready for this i'm gonna take this on i'm gonna become better like let's go like i'm ready to start right now and so so i had to get my surgery um i had to like meet and meet sir yeah meet certain criteria before i could get my surgery Gosh. um like extension you probably know like stuff like yeah. that, all that type of stuff so I, I worked on that for like a month <laughs> yeah like yeah, you're just saying stuff and i'm like oh god i remember all of this so, <laughs> awful times but uh but it, it teaches you a lot at the yeah same it time. does so um so my new year's present was january 7th i had my surgery and uh so i tore my aco and i also tore both of my meniscus god so my lateral medial meniscus um so surgery took like four hours and they were like all right, like within a year, probably you'll, you'll be able to come back. And so like every single day, like no matter what it was, no matter how I was feeling, like I made a promise to myself, like you're going to give 110% every single day, mm. you know? And so I would, if there was, you know, three reps of, of 10, I'm doing four reps of 10. I'm doing, I'm doing extra. I'm doing more in the gym. Like I would be there from like 12 o'clock to like six o'clock. Wow. Just like doing like rehab. And I remember like the trainers would always like mess with me and saying like, you know, you take forever to do your stuff. But I was like, like I was so like into what I was doing, like every single thing that I was doing, I was making sure I was doing it to the, the best of my ability. Because at that point I couldn't train, like I couldn't do anything else besides like be in the gym, doing gym work and stuff. So I'm like, if I can't express myself on the field, like I'm going to do that in here, I'm going to give everything every single day that I'm there the whole time and just try and get stronger and just come back as, as fast as possible. I love that, man. That is so good. Yeah. Especially because like when you went and like your mindset is like, I'm not just going to get back from this. I'm going to get back better. Oh, yeah. And like, there's a thing when it comes to people say stuff all the time, man. Right. Like, Oh, I'm going to do this for perfect example, new year's resolutions. Right. Yeah, yeah. But like the thing that I love the most that you did is that you actually put in the work, man. Yeah. Nothing happens if you don't put in the work, right? 100%. 100%. And uh, I remember at that time, uh, something that, like, was, like, really good for me was my uh, my dad recommended this this audiobook. Okay. It's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Oh, uh, I've actually read the book. Yeah. And, uh, like, it's, like, cliche, like, oh, this book, like, changed my life or something. But, like, it, like, it really did change my mentality, like, like, I thought I was, you know, tough bef mentally before I got this injury. But, like, after going through that, reading that book, like, bro, I felt like I was, like, like unbreakable. Really. Yeah. And so I remember. And that guy makes you feel like oh, even yeah. if you're tough, like, you're, like, Yo. nothing compared to him. <laughs> he, he's crazy. Yeah. And, like, I, like, loved it. Uh -huh. And so, like, I, like, bought into it. And I was, like, like, how am I going to get even more mentally tough? Like, yeah. I almost became, like, obsessed with it. I was, like, I would be in my like bed and I would like wait till I was like super tired, like 12, 1 a.m. Like, I didn't have school at the time cause uh -huh. I was like taking like a gap year, just like rehab and stuff. And so it would be like 12, 1 a.m. And I'm like, like it's time to like get up and 
do a lift like right now like as many reps as you can like push-ups pull-ups like squats all that type of stuff like I'm that's like, awesome so i'm like <laughs> like it sounds crazy like it low-key is kind of but i was like i'm doing this right now because in my head yeah. nobody else is yeah. doing this right now honestly it's crazy for people that want to live an average lifestyle bro it is. you know what i'm saying yeah but f- for people that want to perform and mm-hmm. people that know performers, they're probably like good for you because I know how hard it is. You know Bro, what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not trying to be average. I'm exactly, trying to, I'm trying to be the best. So that's what I did. And I, I did all that stuff every single day, like just pushing myself to to my limits almost. And I felt like I couldn't, like <clears throat> I couldn't live with myself in a way if I didn't do like there. There was a section of his book, and it was like he said he when he was like trying to you know, become, like, a Navy SEAL or whatever, he would do, like, these crazy workouts to lose 100 pounds in, like, three months. Yeah. And he said that he um, he would do these, like, crazy workouts, like, that would last, like, 12 hours long. And I remember he said one time that he had to do, like, these pull-ups, and, and he, like, stopped one short of pull-ups. Yeah. Because he was just, like, so exhausted. And he, like, drove home, and he he said to himself, like, like if that one missed pull-up, like, causes me to not, you know, joint become like a navy seal and do what i want to do then like how am i going to live with myself so i take that into what i do every single day like if i don't do this last sprint if i don't do this you know whatever it may be like i'm maybe there's a chance i'm not going to become great yeah and so i do it every single time because i want to be great so i love that bro that's what i do yeah. that is so good two things that i love one is that your dad actually like was like okay like this is something that i know that can help you out right so yeah. that's good i don't think he even read it at the time <laughs> <laughs> but never was, mind no shout out to the dad and no, i'm just kidding <laughs> nah, it was it was it was good but i don't think he read it but i it got was, you it, yeah. <laughs> but the second thing man is like i think honestly sometimes like we all need like mentors in our lives it might not be a person directly speaking to you but I feel like at that precise moment, he was like a mentor to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, like if this guy can go through all of this, like he kind of set the standard. Okay, like I don't have to be exactly where he's at, but I can be the best at where I'm at, you know? For sure, yeah. Um, So I would like listen to it in my car uh, going like to and from training because it's like a 20-minute drive. So I would just like play it, listen to it, get home, and then just like turn it off. And that was just kind of – so I broke it up into like segments sort of, and it, it lasted me probably like three month, three weeks to a month maybe because okay. like it's like long it's like yeah. you know, a couple hours but no it was it was really good for me at that time and it it taught me like taught me like a whole lot um because you know my my recovery process wasn't just like a straight straightforward like, yeah it wasn't just like an you know an uphill climb like there was t- there was tons of like peaks and valleys and like it was and it's not like a one uh injury type type of thing it's like a whole bunch of like two or three small ones too you know what i'm saying oh yeah, yeah like yeah. It, it's all pieced like i don't know how to explain but it's all pieced together but like yeah. you can't just work on one thing and everything is good you yeah know what it's saying? like if you just do like things for your your quad let's just say your right quad and your hamstring like there's going to be strength disformities like throughout the body so you need to work everything the, yep. whole, the whole time to you know get back to that that playing level and so um yeah it was it was really tough, but... Um, but you came out of it, man. Yeah, no, I came out of it for sure. Like, so basically they were saying it was going to be like a year, a year long recovery. Um, and I was like, at that point, I was like, all right, I'm going to be back in eight, eight months, seven months, because I'm going to, I'm going to work my tail off every single day. I'm going to get back. And so I remember it was like <clears throat> probably s- s- six months, seven months in. And like, I like plateaued, like my leg um, would literally, when I would wake up, it would be like crooked like this. Like it would take me 20 minutes to straighten my leg out because like we couldn't figure out why. Um, so like I did, we tried everything. Like I got, I got an injection, uh, like a PRP or yeah, injection. Yeah. I got like all different types of stuff. We got like MRIs, like two different MRIs and like nothing was like showing up. And I remember thinking I was like, man, like what, like nothing's helping. Like what, like what's, what am I going to do? Like I can't, the way my leg would be, the way it would feel, like it would be so hard to explain. And like, we just didn't know what was going on. And I was like, how am I supposed to be able to play with this? Like, how am I supposed to like become a professional and do it, like reach my ambition if if this is like what I have to play with? Yeah. So I was like, in my head, I was like, like there must be like something wrong, you know? Yeah. Um. So we like kept fighting rehab. I like plateaued for probably about two months 
kind of just doing the same stuff and trying everything um, until eventually we were like, all right, like we should go in and, and do a scope. Um, so the doctor, you know, I went into that surgery, like I didn't know what they were going to find. And I was almost like, I was almost hoping they found something because I, I didn't want that to be the way my leg felt yeah. for the rest of my life, you know, like I w almost wanted there to be like a little something that they could find. Yeah, to, it's like an answer to, for you to be like, okay, yeah. like, let me find a solution. E exactly. Yeah. So, so they went in and they did like a scope and they found it was called like a, like a cyclops, like legion of scar tissue that was like hiding okay. behind my knee. And it like wasn't showing up in the MRI, which is, which is really weird. Um, so they got rid of it. And like the second they did that, bro, it was like, it was night and day. Wow. Like it, it was crazy how like one like little thing can like make such a big difference. Yeah, like man. I remember them taking it out and like the day after my surgery, I literally felt better than wow. I had felt in like seven months. Like it was like, and then the second they did that, I was like, bro, like I'm close now. Like I'm going to get back like soon. Nice. It's yeah. crazy how the body works, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> it is. Like yeah. my, res my appreciation level, my respect for like people that have disabilities is just is so oh, astronomical yeah. now. Cause like yeah. going through stuff like, it's like, wow, like people live with like stuff like this, like for their whole life, you know, it's crazy. Like, like those people are some of the toughest people yeah. out there. A hundred percent, man. Yeah. Nice. So tell us about uh, Wake Forest, man. How did that happen? Yeah. Um. So I was, it was like my probably junior year. Um. Once like colleges can start like reaching out and stuff, and uh -huh. they like reached out to me like the first day that they're allowed to reach out and were saying that they were like interested and stuff. And I, uh, you know, I grew up in Charlotte, so I went to their like camps when I was younger, like the the Wake Forest like summer camps, okay. like sleepover and whatnot. And I remember them being like super fun, and you know, I just kind of that was like the only uh, college really that I had like an, an attachment to. So I was always kind of like keen on going there. Uh, and then like we like talked and, and worked it out and stuff. And I like committed my, uh, I committed my, probably my junior year. I, th I think my junior year. Okay. Um, and yeah, I was just, I was excited. It was a super exciting like time. I was either, I was, you know, going to play at Wake Forest or, or I was going to go sign, like, a, a professional contract with, with sporting. Like, that, nice. that was, like, my my two things that I, you know, that was what I wanted to have happen, so. Okay. Yeah. So that's cool, man. And then uh, that's awesome, bro. So you haven't officially gone yet, but, like, yeah. you guys start soon, right? Yeah, so um, so when I got injured, I, I took a gap year mm -hmm. because I wanted to, like, do my rehab and, and everything. So I'm going to start up uh, in this, the spring. Okay, perfect. And, and go there. And, nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's exciting. I mean, they have a great team. Like, you know, they have some really good players on there. It's, like, almost, like, the same as, like, sporting. It's the same thing. You're going into a new environment. So, you know, I need to make sure that when I go in there, I'm ready to compete every single day and, you know, try and earn my place in the team. And then, you know, once you once you get that place in, in the team, you have to make sure you, you take your opportunity and you, you stay in that team. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. My last question then for you would be then, my last question, I don't think I've even asked you questions. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been kind of yeah. rambling. I no, guess. but it's good. All yeah. of it is good. Um, yeah. Would be, uh, what would be your number one advice for somebody that wants to play, like that wants to go to an academy, that wants to play D1? Like what? what's that number one advice that you would give that soccer has taught you? Yeah, um, I would probably say like to just like have fun playing when you're younger and just like, love the game because if you like don't love the game really or you're not like a really fully committed to it like you're not gonna really get to where you want to be but if you have that like that drive from your heart like you know I love this game I want to get to this this spot then you know you're gonna it, it'll be a lot easier to get there but at the same time that doesn't come without like you know hard work which yeah. is the main thing is like you know it's cliche like hard work gets you places but like after like suffering like the ACL tear and a bunch of other stuff, like it, it's true. Like you, if you work hard, man, and, and you give your everything, like, you know, good things are going to happen to you. And that's like the main advice that I can, I can give to, to players and stuff. You know? I love that, man. That is so important, man. Not only yeah. in soccer, but in life, bro. Like oftentimes I see people do stuff just for the money aspect. Oh, yeah. and don't get me wrong. Like you do need money, but like if you're doing something that you're not, you don't feel fulfilled with like internally like you will feel that man yeah it's, right yeah if you're not passionate about what you're doing like it's gonna it's gonna affect the way you, you feel really like you can be 
you know, the, the richest guy in the world. But like, if you don't love what you're doing at the end of the day, then like, what's it worth? Yeah, man. I mean, like, I know everybody wants to be rich externally, but you need to be rich internally as well. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Right. And so like everything that you went through, like, is not that it's easier, but like, it's, it's easier when you know it's something that you love and you're passionate about. For sure. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, this concludes another episode of the podcast. Ryan, man, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been fun.